to make money with cattle. That's it. And a lot of you fellows that are more established uh, producers right now, you know that this season is tough. A lot going on, but there's still money to be made. Okay. Uh, but if you're already involved in the cattle industry, this first video may not be for you because it's just going to cover the basics of operations as far as what kind of operations to have. And it's really designed for somebody who has never dealt in the cattle industry before. So later videos you can find pretty helpful. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And as those come up, then you'll be notified of them. Yeah, you'll be all right. <laughs> this one here, you're gonna be sitting around most times with no dub. Really? Come on, let's get to something I can use. This, this is not designed for the experienced producer. All right, this is for beginners. Okay. okay, but if you are new to the cattle industry and you're wanting to figure out exactly, you know, what type of operation you want to set up, this is a video for you. So let's get started with this. If you already own a place, what infrastructure do you have on your farm? Um, what additional infrastructure will your new cattle operation require? So let's go over the different types of cattle operations. Uh, first, we're talking about the stocker feeder uh, operations. This kind of operation, you're mainly buying steers at auction or from other farms. Uh, you put the steer in a uh, confined feed area, you feed them out to maturity, then sell them to a meat processor. Uh, stocker feeder operations can be done in two kinds of operations. First being a calf owner, uh, are also known as confined animal uh, feeding operation. That's the word calf owner. A calf owner limits the animal's movement into a confined area, and by having the animal in a confined area, you control the weight that's being put on, how fast they're put it on. And uh, thereby the animal uh, puts on the pounds faster, faster out to the process. But needless to say, I'm not a big fan of cat moves. Um, you're gonna be dealing with some pretty nasty uh, uh, waste issues, uh, having them confined like that. It is a miserable life for those cows. I like cows. I like cows better than I do most people. <laughs> so that bothers me. Now, you can have an operation that finishes out on pasture. This allows you to market your cattle as grass-fed, for one, uh, and it's a more humane operation. Starting out in this industry, you got to make some really big decisions, and you, you need to, you, you're going to have to make, otherwise you're going to be kicking yourself on down the road. One. What kind of operation do you need? What do you want to do? All right. Uh, what breed or breeds of cattle do you want to deal with? Things you should uh, consider when selecting breeds. Is this going to be a family farm? So <clears throat> if it is, going to be children on that farm? And what is the most popular breeds in your area? If you're going to go there, couple of things um, and the reason I asked earlier about kids okay um, is because breeds are, can be certain breeds can be very spooky very spooky or just downright mean all right if you ever dealt with Brahmas you know what I'm saying uh, these are not good to have around kids okay kids think they're invincible and may cross the pasture only to be ran down by a not so nice uh, overrated cat. Uh, and they can be even dangerous to teens because teens seem to take a little more risk. The next popular operation is what they call a, a commercial cow-calf operation. Now this is where 
your product that you're going to be selling uh, is mainly going to be cows. You're going to have commercial cows, which when we say commercial cows, we're talking non-registered animals. These are not a specialty breed, while they're, they are in a sense. Commercial cow is not registered. You don't have all those hoops to go through with the calves. And it is common what you're going to see out in most pastures. Um, it allows, but here's the thing. I know a lot of guys look at these fellows who are selling bulls for $60,000 and think, I want to be a specialty breed. That's good. That's great goat. It really is. That's what I did for a lot of years. Right? Uh, a couple of things go into that. One is reputation. Do you have a reputation for breeding good genetics into your herds and good cattle? Well, you're not going to want to try finding that out with uh, doing your experimentation with expensive registered animals. Here again, I like to tell guys that are looking for that kind of a career, start off with commercial herd. And I kept a commercial herd for years, even with my other animals, not in the same area, but I have both. Um, <clears throat> here again, if there's going to be children involved on that farm, you want to go with more docile breeds. Uh, the uh, black and red Angus are good ones. Charlets are good. The uh, the black white face, which is a, an Angus Hereford mix, is good. Uh, I even ran Brangus, and those were like little pups. So even though they were specialty breed, uh, what that does for you. It gives you a chance, number one, to gain experience with cattle. If you haven't dealt with cattle before, there's a lot to learn, okay? Um, as a good stock person, because there's just as many women getting into this industry as men, so we're gonna change that term from stockman to stock person, <laughs> okay? And they're doing great work, okay, they really are. But if you're gonna be a good stock person, some of the things you ought to be able to do. Think to yourself, now, can I look at a cow and pretty much within 25 to 50 pounds tell you how much that animal weighs just by looking at it? You know, need some experience. Okay? Because if you're at an auction, they're running a bunch of animals through, and you can't pretty much tell where they're at when they hit that scale after you've done one the bid, you may be shocked if you guessed way low. And you're going to be emptying out your bank account. So, experience. There's no compromise for that. Uh, matter of fact, me and a neighbor who had uh, a lot of years of deal with cattle, we used to bet with each other. I'd say the cow weighs in at 800 pounds, he'd say it weighs in at uh, 750. And would run it across the scale and see who was closest got the Got to buy the cold drinks. So, and I usually beat him on a regular basis. Now and again, he'd, he'd catch one on I'd usually, I'd usually get the free drinks. Uh, that's the kind of experience you need to have. But you'll get that handling with commercial uh, herd. You know, dealing with them, watching them put on the weight. And pretty soon you can look over and go, yeah, it's an 800 pound cow. That's simple. You just look at it. All right? Experience. Animal husbandry. You get to learn a lot of things, even with commercial herd on the cow cat. Right? If you get squeamish with the idea of being shoulder deep with your arm into a cow's tush, it may not be the industry for you. Because let me tell you something, I always used to laugh. Seems like everything you do with a female cow requires you sticking your arm up the butt. That simple. Checking her for pregnancy, arm up the butt, okay? <clears throat> but if you're going to IA her, arm up the butt, just the sort of things you get to, that's a lot of fun, man. okay? So if you're squeamish about stuff like that, I want to think twice about it or figure you're going to be paying on somebody to do that. Uh, but learning these things, how to pull a calf, 
All right. You're going to end up pulling a few calves, but you also in the process start learning how not to end up pulling calves. That's in your breeding process. You learn about genetics. These all come through a commercial herd without you risking a lot of money. And when you get really good and all your neighbors are telling you and, and even the auction houses plugging you whenever they bring your cattle in, saying this man knows, knows his genetics, he raises fine animals. Gets you a little extra money on the auction, auction block. One of the reasons you need to build that reputation. So you want to, you, you got to stand out in the crowd a little bit. You really do. So on this type of operation though, uh, you're dealing with the entire life cycle of those animals, including when, you know, mama quits producing and you have to cycle her out of the herd color, all these things. So you've dealt with the entire life cycles of these animals. Uh, you, you learn to breed. You learn what bulls you don't want to breed with. Um, you know, all these things come into play. It's, a, it's an exciting life. It's a lot of fun and something you can be very proud of. But it takes time to build a solid herd. Yeah. You're not going to start off day one and go, but look at that. That's, that's a fine herd. That damn. Okay. It does take time. Uh, I'm excellent to get in, especially breeders. That's uh, kind of a whole different animal. Specialty breed, you're breeding either Angus, uh, you know, black or reds. Um, I, I dealt with Brangus. You know, you might, there's such a wide assortment of, of uh, you know, beef masters, so forth, that can. Uh, Bring good money, okay? You can make money raising quality bulls, quality heifers, uh, so where people can build the genetics in their, their herds. You can sell semen if your bull is uh, a good one, okay? But you also have to not only know the cattle industry. Breeding associations have just whole lists of hoops you have to jump through to keep that registration squared away on those animals. Fail to do it, you can lose a lot of money. All right, but that's how tough that, in that industry is. Do you have the potential to make a lot of money in that industry? Yes, you do. Yeah, like I said, I've seen, I've seen bulls sell for over $100,000. Now, these are like three time grand champion nationals and so forth. So there's a lot goes into those kind of programs. So that's kind of where you're at. Those are really the operations you want to deal with. I'll put a list of them up here, but decide what you need to do. And that's something, if you got kids and a wife, you can talk to them. Uh, for a family farm, commercial cow calf is what I would recommend. Okay. If you hired my company to come out and consult with you, it's probably where we're going to be, unless you've just got a truckload of experience. See what I'm saying? Because there you're gaining the experience, you're building your reputation. And then if you wanted to get into specialty breeds, that'd be a good way to start. I tell every guy going into cattle, if this isn't something you truly want to do, you might be better off staying out. Okay, you got to have a love for for breeding animals, animal husbandry, raising these things up. You have to have a love for them. It's on again, off again. I've seen guys do that. Uh, consistency out of a breeder is extremely important, and other cattle producers in the area quickly pick up if you're not bad. Sam. I quickly figure you out. So talk with your, you know, if you haven't started in the cattle yet, talk with your family. If you've got kids, especially small kids, go with some docile breeds. But never forget, that is a big animal. Very loving animal. Okay. 
very kind animal and pretty smart. But they can accidentally kill a child or an adult by accident. So be very careful having kids around. I've seen too much of it. <clears throat> Where kids standing up against the barn, petting a cow's face, and suddenly it decides to rub a shoulder against it. And it leans into them. And literally crushes that child. You may have a, you know, 17, 1800 pound animal, almost like a car, man, just slammed into your child. Be over in a second. Cow didn't mean to hurt him. And can we say cattle will love you to death? <laughs> Literally. If you're dealing with dairy, which I'm not going to get into that, I had a, a nurse cow and uh, one milk cow for the old farm. I am not a dairy man. All right. Now, I teach you how to graft a orphan calf onto a, a good nurse cow. Trick to that, and we'll get into that a little farther now. But dairy operations, I don't know about, and looking at the finances of them here of late, I don't want to. Okay. Well, as this went long enough, list down these kind of operations, drive around your area, talk to some of the other farmers, see what they're buying, see what they got out there in their pastures. That's your market, man. Seriously. That's who's going to be buying your calves. That farmer. All right. If you got a quality animal, keep that in mind. You have a great day. Next one coming up is going to get a little, little more hands on for you. But this is a good place for you to start. You have a great day. Talk to you soon.